nucleophilic acyl substitution, the reaction that occurs between carboxylic acid derivatives and nucleophiles, has two key steps. The first step involves the nucleophile donating electrons into CO pi star to create a relatively high energy tetrahedral intermediate. This step, called nucleophilic addition, is governed by two primary factors. The strength of the nucleophile, how high energy its homo is, and the strength of the electrophile, how low energy its LUMO is. Using the basics of MO theory and the relative electrophilicities of the carbonyl groups that were discussed in an, in an earlier video, you have a pretty good foundation for understanding this step. The second step, which we'll focus on in this video, involves the collapse of that tetrahedral intermediate and the elimination of a leaving group. Here, it's the generic X minus. In somewhat less formal language, I call this step the lone pair push, because the lone pair that was forced up onto the oxygen falls back down and pushes or kicks out a leaving group. Molecular orbital theory can actually help us under the, understand this step as well. It involves a donor-acceptor orbital interaction too. Those orbitals are just within the same molecule. Here, the orbital that houses the high energy lone pair is the sp3 orbital on oxygen, or LPO sp3. In order to kick out the leaving group, that orbital must overlap with the sigma star orbital of the C leaving group bond. Here, that's sigma star Cx. As these orbitals interact, you can see that we're forming a new pi bond between carbon and oxygen because those two orbitals are overlapping side to side. The result is that the CO double bond, the carbonyl group, is reformed and the leaving group leaves. But the lone pair actually has three potential sigma star orbitals that it could overlap with, one corresponding to each of the three groups attached to our central carbon. In our generic example here, they are sigma star CR, sigma star C nucleophile, and sigma star CX. So how do we know which one the lone pair will prefer to interact with? It depends on two factors. The energy of the sigma star orbital, the lower the better, and the stability of the leaving group. Usually we focus on the latter, so let's go with that method for the moment. The three possible leaving groups here are R minus, NU minus, and X minus and they've all left with a lone pair. And we have a way to determine the stability of lone pairs, the six principles that we've used regularly over the last two modules. Charge and resonance, electronegativity, hybridization, and size or polarizability, and inductive effects. The lower the energy of the lone pair, the better the leaving group. The best leaving group is whichever one has the most stable lone pair that was holding it to the carbonyl carbon. And here's the cool thing. We actually have a quantitative measure of the stability of lone pairs that used to be holding on to something. This is precisely what determines acid strength. The stronger an acid, the more stable its conjugate base. And stable conjugate bases make good leaving groups. So if we have pKa data available, we can use it to help us determine the best leaving group. There's a really systematic way to do this, and it's easy to get confused, confused by the details. Don't leave out steps until you're really comfortable with the method. 
First, identify the structures of the possible leaving groups. Here we said they were R minus, nu minus, and X minus. Then draw their conjugate acids. Just attach an H where the lone pair was. Identify the functional group that you've just drawn and find the pKa of that functional group. The lower the pKa of the leaving group's conjugate acid, the better the leaving group is.